All right, if you have your Bibles, let's go ahead and open those up. Let's open those up. We will be in Romans chapter 14 today, Romans 14, verse 4. And we are in the midst of a sermon uh, devotional series called God is Able. God is Able. What are you being tried at today that you need to believe? God is able. God is able. Lord, you're able. Is God in the midst of doing, you know, surgery on your mind or your heart, <laughs> healing you, changing you, helping you to see things his way? Are you seeing God's word and knowing this is the right thing? I need to obey God in this area, but it's a little difficult and you need to believe God is able. I need to trust God, you know, in this thing. And today we're in Romans 14 verse 4, and I love this because it, it says that God is able to make you stand. God is able to make you stand. Paul, likewise, in Ephesians chapter 6, when he talks about the full armor of God, he says, put on the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, our feet shod in the gospel of peace, and in our hand the shield of faith, the sword of the Spirit, and praying without ceasing. And then Paul says, and having done all, what are we to do? He doesn't say fight. He says, and having done all, we stand. You know, here at Calvary, we like to say, stay the course. It's the same thing. Romans 14, verse 4, Paul says, God is able to make you stand. Listen to this. Who are you to judge another servant? You know, we need to be careful with that. Be careful passing judgment. Jesus in Matthew says, you know, I, I always read this as almost a philosophical statement. I guess when we get to heaven, Jesus will let me know if I was right or wrong. But Jesus looks at his disciples and he goes, why do you look? You know, he says, have you ever considered this? Why do you look at the speck in your brother's eye when there's a plank in your own, when there's a two by four in your own eye? You know, I think he's trying to elicit in them what Paul will elicit in, in us as Christians in Romans 7. You know, uh, the things I want to do, I don't do. The things I don't want to do, I practice. There, there's this thing working in me against God. In my mind, in my heart, I want to serve God, but then I have this carnal nature that is an enmity with God, and it's, it's, uh, in, it's in me. I'm almost, uh, you know, schizophrenic at times, Lord. How are you going to help me? Who will deliver me, Paul says in Romans 7. And Jesus says the same thing in the, the Gospel of Matthew. He says, why do you look at this speck in your brother's eye when there's a plank in your own? It makes no sense, right? It makes no sense. Imagine you're like, you got a giant two by four sticking out of your eye. It's obvious. And you're pointing out your friend going, let me, let me get the speck out of your eye. While you're trying to get the speck out, bam, bam, you're hitting them in the face with the two by four. They're going, hey, before you get the speck out of my eye, how about you get the giant piece of wood out of your, out of your own eye? That might be why I have a speck in my eye because, you know, sawdust came off of the wood in your eye into my eye. And that's what Paul says in Romans 14. He says, who are you to judge another servant? You know, be careful with that. You know, we need to do the loving, let God do the judging, right? Don't, don't, it's not our job to fix everybody, to judge everybody, to correct everybody. It's our job. Who are you to judge another servant to his own master he stands or falls? You're not his master. <laughs> God is. And if it's not God, you know, the key to life is finding the right master. If they have a different master, well, to his own master, he stands or falls. But if God's your master, look at this. Indeed, God, he will be made to stand for what? Listen, God is able to make him stand. God's able to make those around you stand. God's able to make those believers that maybe, you know, like Proverbs says, as a dog returns to his vomit, so a fool returns to his folly. God's able to make those believers who've slidden backwards away to stand again, love them, pray for them, believe God. God's able to make those who've succumbed to pride, right, begin to esteem themselves as better than others rather than, like the Bible says, do not esteem yourself better than others, right? Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. He'll lift you up. But what, what do you do in the midst of this? Paul says, who are you to judge another servant? If they're my son, if they're my daughter, Jesus would say, relax. God is able. I am able to make them stand. And today, listen, maybe that's you. You know, maybe you're feeling judged. Maybe you're feeling condemned or criticized by others. Listen, God's able to make you stand. God's able to make you stand. 
Maybe you're feeling like, I can't stand anymore for Jesus. I'm too tired. I'm too weary. I'm the only one, right? The Eeyore syndrome has come upon you. I'm the only one. It's not fair. Woe is me. Listen, go back to the Lord. Isaiah 40 says, those who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They will mount up with wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will not walk and not be faint. God is able to make you stand. God is able. And Father, I pray that, Lord Jesus, you would help your people today to stand for you, to stand with you, to walk and talk and stick close. Lord, to reach up like a child holding their father's hand. And today I pray that their hand would be in your hand and that they would stand with you. If they've fallen, they'd grab your hand. And what are you going to do? You're going to pull them back up. You're going to brush them off. You're going to wipe them down. You're going to heal their wounds, and you're going to cause them to walk again. So, God, we thank you that you are our master, and that, God, you are able to make us stand. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen.